Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to dive into a project. I just did this kind of for fun, but also just to have uh, kind of an example for each one of these different systems that I talked about. We're also going to be using things like the time editor and the camera sequencer, which I mentioned in the beginning for doing some, some timing stuff. Now let's get over into Maya, and we will uh, dive into it. So what you see here is basically the starting point. So I had to start with uh, Domino. So I actually modeled these out. These are actually just real simple uh, models that I created with a few bevels and then some booleans to actually carve out the indentations for the for the various digits. So I have all the dominoes. I have uh, the double blank all the way through the double six. So I'm now going to use this as a basis for my instancing. So we'll go to the next step and we'll just load up. Uh, a scene that has all the dominoes kind of just placed at the origin. Uh, I'll just quickly show you that if I select these, you can see that each one is indeed unique. Uh, but I also have them in order, so you can see that the first domino is the double zero, and the last domino is the double six, and then I have them in order in between. So I'm going to use mass to instance these out. I'm going to select from the first domino all the way to the end domino, so that's going to give me the ordered selection. Uh, and then I'll just go into either my mash uh, shelf or I can go into my mash menu. They're basically the same thing, just a different way of getting there. But I'm going to create a mash network. Now, as I do that, what that's going to do is it's going to give me a couple of nodes. It's going to give me a base node, which is the waiter node, which you can kind of consider as kind of the hub for all of my mash effects. And then I have the distribute node, which is basically the initial placement and the initial um, uh, repetition or, or the, how many instances I have. So in other words, do I have 28 or do I have 100? I set that here. Uh, and then I also have control over things like the orientation and whatnot. So I might want to add a little bit of rotation there. But what you can see is that each of these instance objects is a copy of the original first double blank domino. But I want to have all the dominoes included. So by default, it always takes the first item in the list if you give it a list of objects. But you can fix that by just going in and adding an ID node. You add an ID node, and that will actually allow you to extract the individual IDs of all of the dominoes. So now you can see on the far left, it's a little hard to see there, but I have the double blank, and then I have the double six here. And now I might want to go in and change the distribution. So let's say I add 56, which is double. You can see now I get two sets. So I get zero to the six here, zero to the six there. I can also randomize this. So if I actually go to the ID node, by default, it's going to be linear, but if I switch this to random, now that will take the 28 dominoes and it will randomly distribute that, that across the, the distribution that I've chosen. Now I can change that by editing this random seed, and that will actually just change the starting point of the randomization. So if I wanted to kind of tweak where these are positioned, I can. Now the next thing I might want to do is change the type of distribution. So I've got a variety of different ways that I can distribute this. I could put all these into a big ball, and I could say I want to create a thousand of these dominoes. Oh, that's a hundred. Let's add a zero. I can create a thousand of these domo dominoes and have them fill a, a volume. Uh, you can use geometry as well if I wanted to fill an arbitrary piece of geometry. I could use things like a radial mode, and with the radial mode, I'm basically creating kind of a, a sweeping effect. And then I might want to go in and you know, increase the radius. I might want to go in and add a little bit uh, of offset on the angle. I could go in and I could make this more of a coil or a spiral if I want to. But at some point, I want to start to modify other things. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to add a little bit of an offset. I can go in here and add a secondary node called an offset node, which would basically allow me to offset any of the various channels. So I could offset, for instance, the rotation maybe. But I have no animation. If I push play, it's just a static instance. There's no animation built in by default until I actually add some. So there's a variety of ways of adding animation. So one way would be something like the signal node. The signal node is kind of your general purpose Swiss Army knife uh, procedural node. By default, it's just going to create this kind of random motion effect. And you can see they're all kind of jiggling uh, vertically mainly. Um, that's because right now I'm in world space. So I can switch this over into local space, and now they're all going to be moving along their own local axis. So you can see they're kind of undulating from inward to outward. And then I can control where the effect happens. So I'm going to turn off the X, and I'm just going to dial up the Y. And you can see now they're just kind of undulating only along the Y axis. And then I've got different types of motion. Right now it's kind of a random noise. I could set this to be more of a what's called a 
fractional Brownian motion, which is more of a, an actual undulation. So if you can imagine like uh, almost like a beating heart or a pulsing kind of effect, I could switch this into trigonometry and that gives me more of a uniform, it's actually a, a sine wave in this case. This is gonna give me more of a uniform kind of sine wave effect. Uh, but at any rate, I could start to play with this and uh, basically just kind of create this inherent animation uh, pretty easily. But what I really want to do is actually place this along a curve and then use that curve to kind of drive some of the animation. So I'm actually going to go back to the beginning here and we'll use a slightly different met method for the placement. So instead of distributing along a radial pattern, I'm actually just going to grab all of these. And once again, I'll just create my mesh network. And this time, instead of, like I said, using the distribute node itself, I'm actually going to go in and create a curve node. And the curve node will just take in an input curve. So I've got a curve in my scene, which is just a simple path that I created, a NURBS curve. So I just grab that curve node and then just drag the curve into that. And the distribute node actually has to be muted. So I'm just going to turn down the effect of the distribute node because I don't want to amplify that. And I actually want to use the curve node instead as a way of placing these. So you can see I could change the step value. Zero to one will control how much of the length of the curve that's going to affect or be affected by. Now another thing to point out is that this has inherent animation in it. So by default, as I add this curve, then it's automatically going to have animation applied to it. So these will be animated along the path, which could be useful. And then I could layer noise on top of that if I wanted to. But really, I don't want to do that because I want to create some dynamic animation uh, and before I do, I need to turn off the animation for the curve. So I'm just going to take the animation speed of the curve and just turn that down. Now I'll go back to the distribute node. I want to increase the distribution until I get uh, the appropriate number. And we'll just kind of visually kind of eyeball that. Let's just say uh, something like that. And one thing I forgot to do is add the ID node. That's easy to do after the fact. I just go in, add the ID node, and then that will go in and change the distribution uh, based on the individual IDs. And then I can take the, once again, the, the ID node itself, and I can tweak that if I need to. But I'm not going to worry too much about it. So let's say that's about what I want in terms of placement. Let's actually add just a little bit more right there. That's about what I want in terms of placement, but now I want to add some dynamics to this. So right now there are no dynamics and there's no animation. If I push play, nothing happens. So let's talk a little bit about bullet. So I'm going to pause right here and we're going to go back a step and talk about bullet and what it is and what it does. So let's go to a very simple example to illustrate this. So bullet is actually a separate system and it's part of Maya, but it's a plugin. So if you don't see bullet, you have to go to the plugin manager and you just simply have to load it. So there's a, a bullet plugin right here. And it's not loaded by default. Turn that on, turn on auto load, and it'll just be there from that point on. But it basically allows you to go in and add dynamics to objects. So right now, if I push play, I have no dynamics in this scene. If I take these objects now and I go to my bullet menu, I'm going to make the top three objects rigid bodies. And then I'm going to make this donut and this ground a passive body. And then it's just a matter of pushing play, and they automatically react. Now the problem is they're all reacting kind of unusually, and that is because by default the collision method is going to be cube based. So it's going to create a bounding box around all of these and use it for the, for the collision. So what I can do is basically just grab the rigid body node and I can just switch the collision to the appropriate type. So if it's more of a ball shape, I'll make it a sphere collision. If it's more of a tubular shape, I can make it a cylindrical co collision. If it's a shape that has a hole in it, I can actually go in and I can make it a mesh collision and it'll actually use the whole of the mesh. And now when I play this back, now you can see they start to react more appropriately. So this is a dynamic solve and if I change the placement of any one of these, let's say for instance I take this and I move it forward a little bit, that's going to change the entire simulation and now the ball, instead of colliding with the cylinder first, will actually just drop right there into that donut hole and kind of spin around. So that's bullet physics by itself. You can use this just as I showed you, and you can uh, create these dynamic simulations, and, and you can bake them out into keyframes, which I'll talk about in a bit. But one of the cooler things is that we've now integrated that into MASH. So I'm going to go back to kind of where we stopped. Uh, and here I've got um, a 
setup where I've got basically the, the same example I showed you before. Uh, I have actually added a pool ball, and the pool ball is just a single instance. It's one object uh, that's part of a MASH network. Now, it actually has the ability to add instances, but I just have that dialed down to one because I only want one right now. And I want to actually add some dynamic animation to this. So rather than using bullet separately, I'm going to go directly to the MASH editor. And in the MASH editor, for the dominoes, I'm going to create a bullet node, or it's actually called dynamics, but it's creating bullet under the hood. So you don't have to have the plugin loaded for this, by the way. This is just all integrated directly into MASH. So um, now I'm going to go to the pool ball, and I'll add dynamics to that. Now when I push play, everything's going to fall to the ground. The problem is the ground is actually way down there. So for whatever reason, uh, the bullet solver by default is not actually at the, the origin. So all you have to do is just go in and change the ground position, put that at 0, 0, 0, and then rewind and play. And now everything should behave uh, appropriately. So let's actually go in and uh, grab the pool ball. Uh, and I want to reposition that. So let's actually take the pool ball and I'll just add a transform to this. And with the transform, I'm going to create a transform that would allow me to basically uh, pick that up and move it. Oh, actually, it looks like I already had one in there. So let's undo that step. All right, I'm going to bring up the file that actually has this in here because I actually undid uh, an extra step there and I think uh, I broke the dynamic connection, but no big deal. Uh, I'll just play it with this one. So basically what I was getting at is I wanted to position the pool ball, add dynamics to the pool ball, and then add dynamics to the domino network and push play. And then the two are going to interact. So anytime you create a dynamics node as part of MASH, uh, assuming you have multiple MASH networks, then those MASH networks will interact. So I have one for the pool ball, one for the dominoes, and those will share the same bullet solver. So now I can go in and I can start to tweak things like the collision types. Remember, like I showed you earlier, I just want to make, a ha make sure I have a spherical collision type for the ball, and I want to have more of a cubic or kind of square collision type, boxy rather, uh, collision type for the dominoes. And then you can also go in here and add other things like uh, randomization uh, to the distribution. So for instance, you can see as I play this back, those all just kind of fall in line and each one collides with the next in a kind of traditional domino style. Uh, I can actually go in here and add a little bit of randomization as well. So I've got a random node attached to one of the networks. So you can see that as I dial that, I'm adding a little bit of randomization to the rotation so that if I add just enough randomization, you can see here that it's going to fall, flow pretty correctly until it gets to a certain point. And then right there, I've added just a little bit too much randomization. It's going to miss the collision and the domino effect is going to stop. So then I have these influence objects that allow me to control that as well. And I can basically mask out those effects. So you can see I have an influence object here, and I have an influence object here that are actually controlling the amount of the, the randomization. So you can see that as I add randomization, they're only randomizing within the range of those influence objects. But the ones in the beginning are not actually randomizing. So that can be con controlled with a, a transform as well. So ultimately, all of this is still dynamic. So as I'm working with this, I'm basically working with a dynamic solve every time. So I have to basically go back to zero, and then I have to let it resolve every time. I can't really scrub the animation because dynamics don't work that way. Uh, they have to basically solve every single frame uh, in order to know what the next frame is going to be.